What's going on here is much more complex than that. Can we skip this? Like, hit the skip button or something? Oh, you don't want to skip this. Yes, we do. Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. This is my South Park the Stick of Truth hardcore difficulty walkthrough. We're now going to recruit the girls. And this is a pretty long video because there's quite a lot of missions that we're going to be covering here. Now that we've done the Underpants Gnome side quest, or the Underpants Gnome quest, we can now shrink down to the size of a gnome and go into a lot of places we couldn't before. Uh, you're going to need this, obviously, to progress the main game, but it also opens up a bunch of Chim Pokemon dolls, a bunch of items, and a bunch of little secrets. So it's definitely a skill worth doing. But as you head out, you'll be meet greeted by Stan, who wants you to, to come to the wizard, the great wizard, which is Kyle. And the easiest way to spot Kyle's house, if you don't recognise it, is to look for Kyle's dad. He will always be out the front, uh, shoveling snow. And when you move through this kitchen as Cartman, he makes a joke about the kitchen being painted gold, because Jews for some reason like gold, which is funny. But then you go to his house, and one of his rooms is painted a very similar shade of yellow. So it's like, come on Cartman, you can't mock him for having a yellow room when you do too. Do you like gold as well? Do you like Nazi gold because you dressed up as Hitler that one time? But I'm going to be checking the equipment, as you can see, because I'm looking for the... I think it's the Barbarian outfit, or the... Yeah, I think it's the Barbarian outfit. It's an outfit that powers you up at the beginning of battle, because I really like anything that buffs the strength. And when you get to level 14, you get the katana. If you put something like a, a plus 40% or 35% damage bonus to a perfect attack, and then you have equipment that boosts your melee attack or your, your weapon attack or powers you up at the beginning of battle, if you then go on to use the super coffee, which I think it's like ultra mega coffee, gives you two turns and it powers you up. And if you've got the perk that buffs you when you use items or healing items you can generally get like seven buffs and if you do a heavy attack with the katana you, you can take off like 10,000 damage it's insanely powerful and the only downside of that weapon is it's locked behind level 14 and I don't even think I hit level 14 in this guide I might be wrong we'll soon find out because believe it or not there are only six videos left you know the game is pretty short when you know what you're doing 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 Bloody chin Pokemon doll threw my voice off then. But what are we doing? Aside from the obvious, which is we've just talked to Annie. And now we're going to be going and posing as Bebe's boyfriend, I believe. Which is funny, because when you get to the, the bench where the girl is in the park, or in the basketball court, or play area, or wherever the hell it is, Cam's like, you've got to do anything you can to, to get this working. And then he just steps off to the side like the coward he is. <laughs> And he does that during the last boss fight as well. You know, we should all stand strong. I'll stand over here. <laughs> Which is pretty great. But this is the big list of perks. You've not seen me look at them too often. Because I just... I think they're so nominal and pointless. I wish they were detailed and deeper. I wish there was more to it. But that's the same with a lot of progressions in games. Like, they're so conscious of having you know a lot of choices that they don't make the choices interesting and they generally just end up being arbitrary stat boosts and a lot of games are completely guilty of this you know i, I like them when there's a, a super detailed you know complexion to it but you just don't get that I gave butter to sweet swirly one time in that bathroom. Any means but if you come over here to the bench you'll talk to this girl it'll trigger a cutscene. She's going to hit on you because she doesn't realise that your Bebe's boyfriend, pretend. And then her boyfriend's going to come and start fighting. And this guy is a pussy. He's really weak. Uh, something worth mentioning that uh, somebody pointed out in one of the videos. The statistics of HP and so on are all dictated by level and the bosses scale to your level. So you might notice that my bosses have low life. That's probably just because I'm lower level than you. Uh, I noticed it with Chef. There is a chef fight in this game where I think he has about 30,000 life on the the guide. And I fought him yesterday and he had nearly 80,000. So it just goes to show that the lives will definitely fluctuate depending on how high level you are. And you need to be aware of that. But now that we've dealt with that, we need to go back to Annie so we can discuss with the girls. 
Every time you do this, it's going to teleport you into the girl's secret area, which doesn't make much sense when you consider you're like three roads away from it, and we were in fact closer when we were in the playground than we are when we talked to Annie, but I'll let them off with that obvious problem. <laughs> but here she is, and now we have to get a makeover. So, depending on what you pick here will depend on the points you get in the bottom right, and I believe the sluttier you are, the more points you get, which is baffling, but funny at nonetheless and you just have to make yourself up to look like a girl so that you can go into the abortion clinic and uh, qualify for an abortion which is a fantastic thing to do <laughs> and for the people who are wondering why you can't play as a girl in the game is because the girls are almost a separate faction to the boys because you know that's the way it is in South Park that's the way it is in a lot of schools and if you did play as a girl, the game would have to be completely redesigned, so... As sexist as it might have originally seemed, it does serve a purpose. It's not there just to piss women off. But this is the abortion clinic. There's a lot of stuff to, to loot in here. Some of it is pretty fucking grim, like that grenade just then. <laughs> and there is a censored European scene that I just skimmed through. Which blows, because the Doctor has a super inappropriate line on the uncensored version. <laughs> Which, before he gives the abortion, he goes, Okay then, let's get this little fuck trash out of you. <laughs> which I think is a hilarious line, which I don't have in my game. And that's a very, very sad day for South Park fans everywhere. But I came out of the room without picking up the scrubs, which is a mistake, because you need them to pretend to be a doctor. And the cool thing about the scrubs is, they're going to give you an advantage against fetuses, and the next enemies in the dungeon coming up are fetuses. So... If you're a little bit sensitive towards the topic of, you know, unborn life and and fetuses and abortions, then this level's probably going to really offend you, and I recommend you just don't watch. However, if you have a sense of humour, you're going to have some fun. So once you come into the record room, you only have to analyse the box, and then Randy's going to turn up. When Randy turns up, everything goes to hell. So you're checking, you're skimming the files, and then the... I think it's... I can't tell who they are. They look like just standard military dudes. Some of them even look like standard SWAT guys, but I assume they're part of a secret organization. Like, if you look at them, they just kind of look like military. Working for the government, which is pretty much the only explanation you get. But this is another really unique sequence where you get to use the environment to kill the enemies. And with these guys here, if you do this correctly, you can kill all of them, but it's a little bit tricky because their aggro range is large. Like him. To get him, you need to obviously time it so that he's with the rest of the group. And I have done it before, I just didn't do it then. But here are some of the Nazi gnomes. And there is an example of me attacking the bodies and wasting attacks, which is a little bit sad, but there's nothing you can do about it. And there is me getting grossed out, and him dying of the status ailments. So, for those who don't know, grossed out is not only does it take damage off you per turn, but it stops you from being able to heal. And to cure it, you need a cure potion. And then you can do whatever you want, because you don't have it on you anymore. There is a, a similar symptom to it, which is called Dire Aids. And the only way to cure that, I believe, is to go to one of the clinics in Canada. But I've never cured it because there's an achievement for finishing the game with it, and I did that instead. But there is the abortion minigame that they edited out of the uh, European ahead. version. Might be a while before I can walk so, uh, there's an abortion coming up later on in the game, and it's almost the exact same. The difference being is instead of it being on a machine, it's on Randy. So, uh, you can find these sequences on, on YouTube if you're curious to see what they took out of the game. And you'll realise that it's really fucking petty stuff, man. There is so much worse stuff in this game than that. I think, anyway. But, now that you've got your buddy back, you can rotate your buddy to however, whoever you want in your team. You notice I play quite a lot with Butters. It's mainly because I can spam his heal to keep me alive. I would say my favourite buddy is Cartman because he's overpowered. But here are a couple of giant Nazi rats see how they bleed so it only does one damage but it builds them up to to four bleed and the bleed will kill them because it's just that damn powerful 
But before we let that happen, Professor Chaos is going to make an appearance. <laughs> and I, I was kind of hoping that the game would have a, you know, fun times with weapons sequence in it where you got to run around looking like what they imagined themselves to look like when they had weapons. But you just didn't. And there's a few instances like that. Like, Towley. Where was Towley aside from on the loading screen? You know, I've checked all the friends and he isn't one of them. He's just not in the game. And Towley spawned a bunch of Take Piss merchandise. And he was a really silly character. And I was surprised not to see him. But then I'm, it's the same with Mel Gibson. I was really hoping for Mel Gibson. And like when you're on the alien abduction sequence... The sounds on one of the audio records, it sounds like you're listening to Mephisto. And if you remember, Mephisto kept putting boobs on things. And there's a loading screen where you see a chicken with loads of tits, which is a reference obviously to him, but I didn't see him anywhere. And I'm not too sure what the timeline of the, the game is, because there are a lot of people in South Park who have been killed off, you know. And you'll generally see them on the boards. Where it's, you know, like the chicken lover and and that teacher with the big tits. What's her name? Miss Chokes on Dick. There you go. And there's there's quite a few people who have, have gone been killed off or gone missing. You know, Mrs is it Mrs. Crabtree, was she the, the bus driver? The the left hand serial killer guy who thinks he's God killed her off and a few things like that, but South Park is so irreverent in, its, in the way it delivers things that they could easily bring shit back and I can't remember Mephisto ever being killed so I'm not too sure why I didn't spot him but he might have been, it, it's been a long time since I went back and watched the older South Park episodes and they are on, what is it now, season 18? which is pretty crazy, taking piss out of Game of Thrones <laughs> But there are just a couple of instances that I thought would have, have showed up a little bit more than they did. But for all we know, there might be a shit ton of DLC coming towards this game. And I'd be really happy to see that as much as, you know, you are paying for additional stuff. But I always view DLC like this. You know, if you really like a game, you will pay to get more of it. And I know that we shouldn't have to, and they should release everything. A great example of this was Final Fantasy XIII 2. All the optional side bosses, the stuff that make Final Fantasies great, you had to buy. And it wasn't a case of really finding them. They were all in an arena in on like a specific time place. And it just it trivialized the coolest aspect of the JRPG. And I think that's really sad. But here comes Professor Chaos again. <laughs> See what we get this time. So if you've never used this move, it spins the wheel and you pick off the wheel what you want. The move that he just did there is probably the most useful move in the game. Because the shield is so powerful. And there's only certain equipment that gives you a shield. And I've never really played with many. But here are the Nazi fetuses. Because we're wearing the scrubs, we're going to get a bonus against fetuses, which is really useful. And because we've given them so many status effects, after they do their turns, they're generally all going to die. Take this butter with a big hammer. 943 damage, not too bad. <laughs> and there we go. Very close to the end of this fight. And there it is. So there is a lovely poster on the world that on the world on the wall there. Sorry, which is probably going to to poke a few people's buttons. <laughs> I just farted on those uh, fetuses then because you get an achievement for doing it. That's it. That's it. But this is the boss fight. It's against the the one of the Kardashians <laughs> aborted fetuses, a huge aborted fetus. And the thing you need to bear in mind against this boss here is it has an umbilical cord, which is a separate enemy. And what happens is the umbilical cord steals life from you and heals the baby. So I say baby. Fetus, sorry. So what you want to do is you want to focus on building the status effects quickly and then killing off the umbilical. Once the umbilical is gone, you can focus on the boss. So we've set them both on fire and we've given them both four bleed. One thing to note as well, the, 
the Fetus boss does a ground pound that is really quick and it's massively damaging, especially if you're not wearing any armor. And then again, there's a lot of stuff on this game. Like, if you get ambushed on hardcore, you can die regardless of what you're wearing, regardless of if you perfect block. It's, it's incredibly damaging. But Butters just took one for the team there, so I'm going to throw him a healing item to keep him alive, and then we're going to kill off the, the umbilical because it's very close to, to being felled. So there's the backstab command. This is one of my more powerful attacks, although it's nowhere near as powerful as my first playthrough because I had it doing like 10k. But there goes the umbilical, and now we can focus on smashing the baby. There you go, <laughs> I love that animation, it's so good. Butters is a great character. I didn't used to like him when he was first introduced. I just thought he was kind of annoying. But his, his character progression through the series has just gone so good. And like his dad, Butters' dad is amazing. He's so funny. But then again, a, a lot of the, the, the adult males in the series are great, you know. Randy, whenever Randy's involved, it's always funny. Mr. Garrison is so offensive and amazing. Like, I, I was surprised how little of a part Mr. Garrison played in the game because there's a lot of unique episodes that focus on him because he's gone through quite a lot in his time. And you might have noticed that Kyle's dad keeps imagining what it would be like to be a dolphin. And one of my favourite episodes of South Park involves Dr. Garrison having a sex change and uh, subsequently Kyle's dad being turned into a dolphin. <laughs> and it's, it's so stupid. It's one of those ridiculous episodes, but it's... It's so good, like, and it's incredibly offensive if that type of stuff bothers you, but then again, it's South Park, so you already know you're going to be offended if, if you're that easily, you know, disturbed by things. Which is why I'll never understand why the show gets shit, because it's been the same since it started, why the hell would it change, you know? South Park has always mocked everything, and that's the way it is, you know? Some people are just incredibly uptight. But this is a good opportunity to use some different moves with your team to practice with them. Like Kenny's a great character because when he dies he comes back because <laughs> that's kind of what Kenny does. He also has a lot of moves that hit a wide amount of enemies and you don't have to revive him. So he is he's one of the better characters to have in if you're being killed a lot because you don't have to waste tacos on him. And you also get an achievement for letting him die a couple of times which is pretty decent. But here comes the Unicorn Stampede. So you have to wait. To the left of the screen, it'll say a button. It will always be in that space, so just look there and wait for it. And if you hit them all correctly, you'll do some pretty good damage with the Unicorn. So there you go. 1,500 damage, not too bad at all. And that's the end of the Nazi fetus monster. And then we've done the Unplanned Parenthood quest. So we can... And I'm... You'll notice sometimes when you fart on things, you can hear the ghostly voice of Cartman laughing. I have no idea why it does that, but it is funny. So now that we've completely destroyed the building and everybody in it, and nobody seems to be any of the wiser, we can go back to the girls and we can finish off recruiting them. And we're one step closer to the end of the game. So just recruit to Annie, and when we're going to talk to the girls, they're going to say how things sparkle and sunshine and all that great stuff. And that's the end of the mission, so I'm going to sign off here guys, thank you for watching, and you take care now. Creeping me out, dude.